Hey guys, and welcome to part two of our Flying Ghost tutorial. Uh, if you haven't checked out part one, go ahead and click on the video response or the annotation in this video to see how we got the original uh, ghost plates for this video. Now today what I'm going to show you guys is basically how to continue the effect in the computer. Now that you've shot the flying ghosts in your water tank and gotten all that done, uh, you're going to import them into your computer and uh, I'm going to show you guys basically how we achieved this shot for the final Ghostbusters video. Alright, well I've opened up a new project here in After Effects and uh, the first thing we're going to do is just scrub through our clip and take a look at it. Now basically uh, what we're going to have to do here is do a motion track because uh, the camera is tilting up to reveal the ghosts in the ceiling so uh, we're going to have to track the motion of this footage. Now the best way to do that is first of all to set the setting quality settings to full so we can get the sharpest image and get the smoothest track. So we're going to go down here to tracker, hit track motion. We're going to do position, rotation, and scale. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. I'm going to find some good corner points to place our tracking markers. Go ahead down here and go to analyze and hit the forward play button. All right, it looks like our track is complete and it looks pretty darn smooth to me. So what I'm going to do is go up here to Layer, New, Null Object. Then I'm going to go back to our track window, hit Edit Target. Make sure that Null 2 is selected. Hit OK. Hit Apply. And hit OK again. Now what we're going to do is get this little uh, kind of orangish reddish uh, null object square in the middle of our frame and if we scrub forward we will see that it is pretty much tracked directly into the environment. Alright now that will serve as our null object to connect all of the flying ghost footage uh, to that point so it will copy the camera movement that we have uh, analyzed. Alright now to bring in the flying ghost footage. Now I've already isolated my kind of uh, selects for the best uh, clips of the flying ghosts. That is the clips that have the best lighting, uh, the best motion, and the uh, least interference of shadows and, and uh, various things like that. So basically I've gone in and in Final Cut Pro beforehand I've just gone to color correction and I've brought the blacks down a little bit and uh, brought up the whites a little bit and, and kind of adjusted midtones. And uh, I used uh, some of the histograms and various um, color correction graphics uh, to just, just to make sure that everything is in a good range here. That way it'll be a lot easier when we do a composite onto the final shot uh, to make sure that everything is as clean as it can be around the edges and make sure that we get as much detail of the ghost as possible. Alright, now if we go back to our clip here in our uh, composition, I'm just going to find a good spot in the frame where I can drag in my flying ghost clip, my first flying ghost clip. So number one I'm going to go ahead and just take flying ghost one here, drag it in, and I'm going to scale it down a bit. Hold down shift to keep the uh, dimensions correct. And let's see here, so we'll probably have him up in that upper right hand corner. And uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and connect this clip, flying ghost one, to my null object. Now if I scroll through it, he has been motion tracked into the environment. Perfect. Alright, now I could probably get a lot more motion out of this guy. I'm going to do some keyframe animation here of position and rotation. So if I take a look at the clip, he's flying off into the upper right hand corner, turns around, and then moves out probably in towards the middle of the room. So I'm going to go ahead and with my position tool here, I'm going to hit the little keyframe. I'm going to scroll ahead and right about here, I think is a good spot to have him a little bit further off into the right hand corner. Let's see, I'm going to go back here a bit, probably move him back down here. So now he's moved a little further up there. And then from this point, as he turns around and flies off into the middle, set another keyframe and drag them out this way a bit. Now rotation wise his position moves as well so I'm going to hit keyframe on rotation drag off into the 
right hand corner. Probably going to tilt him upwards, I think, a little bit here since he's flying up. Now, by the way, to get to position and rotation, you simply select the clip and hit P for position and R for rotation. And that's how you get there, shortcut. So he's moving up into the right-hand corner. He starts to turn around. And I will adjust the rotation coming down. And we'll tilt him downwards a little bit. So as he gets to the center part here, I think I'm going to have him level out just a touch. All right. Now, as you see, there's really sharp movements here. And, you know, those don't look too good. So what we're going to do is just simply select all of our nodes. I'm going to hit Control, click, go to Keyframe Assistant. I'm going to go to Easy Ease. That way, it's going to smooth the uh, transition between those nodes. Same thing with position here. Easy Ease. Hit save. And let's go ahead and watch that real quick. All right, that looks pretty good. It's a good apparition flying around up there. I think I'm actually going to make him a little larger. Just so we can see him better for this demonstration. All right, looking good. So let's go ahead and move on to getting rid of all of this uh, black around him. Now what I'm going to do is pretty simple. Since I've already kind of color corrected him a bit, I'm going to simply go to my clip here, hit control, click, go to blending modes, and I'm going to select linear dodge. Now already, he's pretty much turned into a ghost. All the black is gone. But we're still getting a little bit of this noise here from the original clip. A little bit of the shadows and, and a little bit of the kind of smudging on the glass of the tank. So what I'm going to do to fix that, first of all, is I'm going to click on this clip, go to Effect, go to Color Correction, Brightness Contrast. And I'm simply going to adjust the contrast and brightness of the clip. And you can see, as you can see, when I increase the brightness, you get a lot more of the original clip there. I'm going to drop that down until it pretty much just disappears. And I'm going to keep adjusting until I get the desired effect. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I think that's good enough to move ahead. Now, of course, if you do have a lot more uh, issues with edges and corners of the tank and, and things showing up, you can always just do a simple mask tool using the masking pen. And you can feather the edges and, and just to kind of animate the mask to uh, travel with your clip. All right. Moving on. Now, to make the ghosts pop out in the Ghostbusters video, we actually uh, we did you know a green ghost and a white ghost. So for this case, I'm just going to do the green ghost just for, uh, for the sake. So basically to do that, I'm just going to select the clip again, go up to Effect, Color Correction, Tint. And uh, I've already pulled it up here just to save some time. Turn that on. I basically just set the white map to this kind of greenish color here. Now try not to blow it out too much or uh, you'll, you'll lose a lot of the detail in your ghost. So I kind of brought him down to right about here. All right. Now some cool effects uh, that we can apply to the ghost to make it look a little bit more realistic is motion blur. And to do that, it's very simple. On the flying ghost clip, if I go over here, you'll see this little kind of a circular trail looking thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and activate it. And that automatically applies a motion blur to the final render. Now, some of you might feel that this uh, the ghost is a little too transparent in the shot. Totally understand. We felt the same way about our Ghostbusters video. So one of the ways we fix that is simply by duplicating the layer. So I simply selected the layer, Apple C, Apple V. All right. Looks like it's pretty smooth there. And he's certainly a lot more apparent in the shot. All right. Now, there are still a few effects that we can apply to this ghost to make the effect of the final shot even better. Now what I like to do is add kind of a trail effect that makes the ghost look a little less uh, puppet-y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both clips, going to go to Effect, Time, and select CC Wide Time. I'm going to drag that all the way up here to the top. Make sure it's the same on both clips. That way the tint is not disrupted. And I'm just going to go ahead and adjust these settings until I get the desired effect. 
So I found a pretty good setting here with uh, native motion on, uh, forward step three, backward step three. And if I go ahead and play this back, you're gonna see I'm gonna get much more of a heavy motion blur and kind of a trail off the ghost. All right, well that is actually pretty much it for the flying ghost effect uh, final tutorial here in After Effects. Of course, uh, if you keep adding the ghosts, I took different selected clips of uh, different shots of our flying ghosts that go different directions, have different attitudes, and I lay them into the scene. Uh, I hope you guys go out and give this a shot. It's really fun to uh, apply practical effects with digital effects, and uh, it really just shows that this stuff still works and can still work and on a larger scale work even better. So I hope to see some really cool videos from you guys soon. Uh, feel free to post video responses of your attempts at the flying ghost effect and stay tuned for more videos like this from us as well as more short films. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to rate and subscribe. We'll see you guys later and make sure to check out our Halloween video this October 31st.